Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering George Lucas burns down Star Wars, never was sexist, and Disney doesn't get the force. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. George Lucas is well aware that Disney has damaged the Star Wars identity forever. In an interview at the Cannes Film Festival, he explains criticisms that he has about how Disney has treated Star Wars. He has criticized Disney's handling of Star Wars before, but this is extensive and this is very specific. Why didn't George Lucas come out with this years ago? Why didn't he push harder on trying to get Disney back on track with Star Wars? I'll tell you what. Clearly, it's because he knows that Disney had its agenda in place and Star Wars was not going to be what Star Wars was supposed to be. That was a decision that Disney made at the top, and that wasn't going to be changed no matter how much anybody pushed against it. From Breitbart, George Lucas demolishes woke critics calling his Star Wars films too white and sexist. But most of the people are aliens. And from CBR.com, nobody understood the force. George Lucas says new Star Wars movies lost sight of originals ideas. George Lucas comments on what's changed with Star Wars movies since he sold Lucasfilm to Disney. And from Cosmic Book News, George Lucas not returning to Star Wars, done making movies, Hollywood lacks imagination, and he also comments on Marvel. Disney had a critical time in its history just recently. George Lucas could have spoken out then. He decided not to. He decided to back Disney CEO Bob Iger, even though, as he says in his own words, Disney doesn't really even understand the Force. Of course they understand the Force. They're deliberately destroying the Force because spirituality has nothing to do with what Disney's agenda is. Spirituality is the opposite of Disney's agenda. From CNBC, George Lucas backs Disney CEO Bob Iger in proxy fight with Nelson Peltz. Filmmaker and Hollywood legend George Lucas is endorsing Walt Disney CEO Bob Iger in the bitter proxy battle launched by activist investor Nelson Peltz. George Lucas is currently the largest individual investor in Disney, according to multiple sources. His support was key to Disney because of his shareholder status and his standing in Hollywood. So what was George Lucas supposed to do? I don't know, maybe just be honest and have this speech happen when it would have made a difference. But here's what he had to say. From Breitbart, George Lucas demolishes woke critics calling his Star Wars films too white and sexist. Star Wars creator George Lucas is striking back against persistent attacks from leftists who say that his space opera is racist and anti-woman. For years, wokesters have attacked the original Star Wars films as having a lack of diversity, for having too many white men, and for diminishing female characters. But finally, George Lucas spoke out to knock down these attacks and characterize them as baseless during a reception at the 2024 Cannes Film Festival after he received the prestigious Palme d'Or on Saturday. That's a fancy award. Lucas said he was thrilled to receive the award, but admitted he may never have expected such recognition, saying, quote, obviously we have a lot of fans. But in terms of Star Wars and stuff, I don't make the kind of movies that win awards, People Magazine reported. He also admitted that when he was first breaking into the business, making money was one of the last things on his mind. He said, quote, to be very honest with you, we weren't really that interested in making money. We were interested in making movies. Lucas was also asked about the accusations that his Star Wars films made between 1977 and 2005 lacked diversity, but he vehemently disagreed with that claim. Quote, they would say, it's all white men. Most of the people are aliens, Lucas said, according to Variety. He also disagreed that he's pushing some sort of white supremacist message. Explaining one of the main ideas behind Star Wars, George Lucas went on to say, quote, the idea is you're supposed to accept people for what they are whether they're big and furry, or whether they're green or whatever, he continued. The idea is all people are equal. He also pointed out that the only characters in his films that face any real discrimination are the droids, who are also the target of put-downs. And he said that was a conscious choice. But it's also something he thinks that will happen in real life as robots become more common in society. Well, that was a way of saying, you know, people are always discriminating against something, and sooner or later, that's what's going to happen, he explained. I mean, we're already starting with AI saying, well, we can't trust those robots. Regardless, Lucas pushed back on the claim that there was no diversity in Star Wars. Quote, in the first one, there were a few Tunisians who were dark, he explained. 
And in the second one, I had Billy Williams. And the prequels, which they were also criticizing, I had Sam Jackson. He wasn't a scoundrel like Lando. He was one of the top Jedi. But what do you think Princess Leia was? He asked incredulously. She's the head of the rebellion. She's the one that's taking this young kid who doesn't know anything and this boisterous I know everything guy who can't do anything and trying to save the rebellion with these clowns. Later films also have strong women, he said, pointing out that, quote, it's the same thing with Queen Amidala. You can't just put a woman in pants and expect her to be a hero. They can wear dresses. They can wear whatever they want. It's their brains and their ability to think and plan and be logistical. That's what the hero is. Lucas has long since sold his Star Wars franchise to the Disney company, so he's no longer directly involved with the creation of the newer TV series and movies. He got around $4 billion for Lucasfilm, half in stock and half in cash. And from CBR.com, nobody understood the force. George Lucas says new Star Wars movies lost sight of originals ideas. It's hard to even imagine being George Lucas creating Star Wars, selling it to a company and having them not understand a premise like the force because the force is a pretty important part of Star Wars. Could he have written that into a contract somehow to make sure, look, you've got to take consultations from me. You've got to listen to me so that I can judge and explain what is and what isn't correct when it comes to my properties. He couldn't really do that. The only thing he could have done is make selling the company contingent upon his being on the board of directors for at least a certain amount of time unless he was voted out by shareholders. Then he could have had some influence. He did select Kathleen Kennedy for Lucasfilm and elevated her at Lucasfilm before the company deal went through. So it's not like Kathleen Kennedy was someone who was thrust upon George Lucas. He thought she knew what she was doing. And she did know what she was doing. But what she was doing was destroying Star Wars. George Lucas reflected on Disney's Star Wars after he sold Lucasfilm to Disney for $4 billion in 2012. Over the past decade, both fans and Lucas himself have expressed mixed reactions to the direction Disney has taken with the beloved galaxy far, far away. Lucas recently opened up about his feelings towards the Star Wars sequels and spinoffs produced under Disney's leadership in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter. Quote, I was the one who really knew what Star Wars was, who actually knew this world, because there's a lot to it. The Force, for example. Nobody understood the Force, Lucas commented. He feels that essential elements of his original trilogy have been lost in translation. And of course they have. But it's not that they've been lost. They've been killed. And he knows that. He's just trying to be as polite as he can. But at this point, he's a multi-billionaire. He's 80 years old. He may as well tell the truth. Or at least the closest thing he can do to telling the truth. And that's what he's doing. George Lucas frequently visits sets and provides consultation to filmmakers, maintaining a presence in the ongoing expansion of his creation. Lucas worked as a creative consultant on the Star Wars sequel trilogy's first film, The Force Awakens, and visited the set of Star Wars Andor. The Star Wars creator was also noted as a fan of Rogue One. A central theme in Star Wars is the concept of balancing the Force, an idea Lucas has discussed extensively. The Force is the lifeblood of the Star Wars universe, connecting every being. Misunderstandings about what it means to balance the Force have proliferated, especially with interpretations suggesting a balance between the light and dark sides akin to yin and yang. Lucas refutes this notion. In a 2010 meeting with the writers of Star Wars The Clone Wars, he explained that the dark side is an unnatural distortion of the Force. Quote, what happens when you go to the dark side is it goes out of balance, and then you get really selfish. When you get selfish, you get stuff. Or you want stuff, and when you want stuff and you get stuff, then you get afraid somebody's going to take it away from you. Once you become afraid that someone's going to take it away from you, or you're going to lose it, then you start to become angry, and that anger leads to hate, and hate leads to suffering, Lucas elaborated. So this is a whole life philosophy, obviously, that Lucas has, that Disney decided, yeah, that doesn't promote anything that we want to promote, so we're going to kill spirituality, let's just kill spirituality instead. In Lucas's view, it's his creation, so yes, in Lucas's view, the light side represents the true nature of the Force. The dark side is a corruption brought on by selfishness and greed. He emphasized that the pursuit of these vices is fleeting and ultimately destructive. This concept was further explored in the Clone Wars. It becomes clear that balance in the Force is not about equalizing the number of light side and dark side users in the galaxy. Instead, as highlighted by the events on Mortis, 
Those who embrace the light side act in harmony with the will of the Force, serving as its agents of balance. The daughter is often depicted following the will of the father and working to protect him, suggesting that the light side aligns with the Force's true nature. In contrast, the dark side represents a corrupting influence that disrupts this balance, turning Force wielders away from their true purpose. And from The Hollywood Reporter, George Lucas says ideas in the original sort of got lost in post-Disney Star Wars films. Which should be an incredible insult to Disney. But basically, these creative people don't seem to care. If the creator who actually made Star Wars or made anything that was well-received or was understood to be an important creation in American society, you would think that the industry would say, wow, we need to get back to what it's supposed to be. George, what should it be? And then kind of insist that Disney fix it. But they're not going to fix it. They want it broken. Quote, I'm a stubborn guy, and I didn't want people to tell me how to make my movies is how Star Wars creator George Lucas summed up the secret to his success. The 80-year-old filmmaker was being honored at the 77th Cannes Festival with a palme d'or for his contribution to cinema, and the crowd, a much younger cohort than is usually seen at these events, whooped and hollered as Lucas walked on the stage. They were wrapped as he sat down for a wide-ranging discussion of his life in the movie business. Lucas said he felt nostalgic to be back in Cannes, where he presented his first feature, THX 1138, at the director's fortnight back in 1971. His THX 1138 co-writer and sound designer, Walter Murch, was in the audience as Lucas recalled how Warner Brothers didn't want to send the duo to France for the premiere, forcing them to scrape together the money themselves. They couldn't even get tickets for the screening and had to sneak in. But, quote, we weren't really that interested in making money. We were interested in making movies, said Lucas, speaking about his early career. He outlined how he fought to get American Graffiti made for just $750,000. Starting in just a few theaters, American Graffiti went on to earn $115 million at the box office. Lucas's deal included back-end residuals off the net gross of the film, which typically meant no money. Because they would keep adding stuff to the budget so it never got paid off, net was almost like fool's gold, the director said. But American Graffiti was making so much money so fast, he actually made a lot of money off it. It was the first time anybody had ever made money on net profits. That's Hollywood accounting for you. But George Lucas was making the money. The film also caught the eye of Alan Ladd Jr., who approached Lucas after a screening and said, the director recalled, you got any other movies? And I said, well, I've got this sort of science fiction fantasy, crazy 1930s style movie with dogs driving spaceships. And Alan Ladd said, I'll do it. I'll do whatever you want. And he hired me and the rest is kind of history. Star Wars is the franchise movie most folks in the audience came to hear Lucas discuss. And the director did not disappoint. He talked about securing licensing and merchandising rights for the first film, something unheard of at the time. The studios didn't have licensing departments. It took longer to design a toy than it did to make a movie, he recalled, and how he got control of the sequel rights in part because Fox at the time was teetering on bankruptcy. Quote, they didn't have faith in the movie, Lucas said. The studio was going bankrupt anyway. They had a lot of movies already and they were desperate. Lucas defended his Star Wars prequel films against the haters, arguing that critics have forgotten that Star Wars was never meant to be a grown-up movie. Quote, it was supposed to be a kid's movie for 12-year-olds that were going through puberty, who don't know what they're doing and are asking all the big questions. What should I be worried about? What's important in life, he said. And Star Wars has all those things in there. They're buried in there, but you definitely get it, especially if you're young. The negative response to his Star Wars prequels, Lucas argued, came from critics and fans who had been 10 years old when they saw the first one and didn't want to watch a children's film. The public trashing of Jar Jar Binks, one of the first figures to be canceled on the then nascent internet, reminded Lucas of the original response to C-3PO. Quote, everybody said the same thing about 3PO, that he was irritating and we should get rid of him, said Lucas. When I did the third one, it was the Ewoks. Those are little teddy bears. This is a kid's movie. We don't want to see a kid's movie. Lucas said, it is a kid's movie. It's always been a kid's movie. Lucas also defended his decision to go back and clean up his original trilogy using new digital technology to make the film look the way he always wanted it to. Quote, I'm a firm believer that the director or the writer or the filmmaker should have a right to have his movie be the way he wants it. Quote, we did release the original one on Laserdisc and everybody got really mad. They said, quote, it looks terrible. And I said, yeah, I know it did, said Lucas. That's what it looked like. Discussing the Star Wars sequels made after he sold Lucasfilm to Disney in 2012, 
Lucas said the new corporate bosses got a lot wrong. Quote, I was the one who really knew what Star Wars was, who actually knew this world, because there's a lot to it. The Force, for example. Nobody understood the Force, he said. When they started other ones after I sold the company, a lot of the ideas that were in the original sort of got lost. But that's the way it is. You give it up, you give it up. George Lucas knows the same thing as a lot of Star Wars fans. If you watch the original movies and you love the original movies and you wanted to follow Luke Skywalker and understand what his journey was, that's what made Star Wars special. The new version of Star Wars is there to replace Luke Skywalker. It's there to replace the original ideas behind Star Wars. That's not the best way to make money. That's not the best way to make good stories. And it's definitely not the best way to make good movies. But that's what Disney is focused on. They don't want the past. They want Disney's future. And that's why most of us don't want anything to do with the new Star Wars. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.